Uh, remember what I always uh, tell you, great post, that uh, before you can engage into answering questions, you must first make sure that um, you go through the examination instructions and information. Why is that important? Because um, understanding the examination uh, instructions and information is part of the examination. Okay, right. So now, um, I'm not going to go through the, the instructions because um, they are always the same. There are, there are no changes. So section A is always compulsory. Section B, you are always given three questions and you're expected to answer only two. So now also in section C, normally you are given two questions and the expectation is to answer only one question. Okay, right. So now, um, jumping on to question one, in particular, 1.1. Various options are provided as possible answers to the following questions. Choose the answer and write only letters from A to D, as indicated there, as an example. Next to the question numbers, 1.1.1 to 1.1.5 in the provided booklet. So I know some 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 of you have the tendency of um, selecting the letter. Then after that, you also write the option given. No, it shouldn't be like that because the moment you do that, you are going to lose marks unnecessarily. Okay, right. So now 1.1 uh, goes as follow. This act creates a framework for acceptable employment practices and safety regulations in the workplace. Um, remember what I always tell you, answering multiple choice, it's very, very tricky and easy. If you know the proper style or proper strategy that you apply. So uh, I normally encourage my learners to opt for elimination method. Elimination method, you compare all the given options, then you select the best out of uh, those given options. So now, this act creates a framework for acceptable employment pr practices and safety regulations in the workplace. Option A, we have basic conditions of employment act. What does it entail? What is the purpose of this act? This act normally set the minimum standards for employment contracts. So we have, um, the conditions there that uh, we will discuss later. So number B, we have Compensation for Occupational Injuries and Disease Amendment Act. So now this act pays much attention towards uh, employees who get injured at the workplace. Uh, I know there are those um, employees who normally get injured driving company cars, or having company resources and not performing uh, the duties that they are ought to, to perform. So in that regard, the company doesn't uh, compensate. It does compensate if the employee got injured at the workplace or if the employee is not inside the premises of the workplace, uh, but should be performing um, work-related duties. So number C, we have Consumer Protection Act. Consumer Protection Act is the act that uh, protects the rights of consumers or the rights of those who buy goods and services. So lastly, which is option number D, we have Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment Act. So this act addresses the issue of inequality. So in particular, this act uh, promotes fairness at different set of uh, workplaces. So this one of uh, broad-based black economic empowerment uh, was also established so as to amend uh, black uh, economic empowerment because black economic empowerment was somehow sidelining other aspects. So now the, the proper option here is uh, B. Proper option is B. So now moving on to the second question, which is 1.1.2. Bravo 
limited used dash as broad based black economic empowerment pillar when they requested their black employees to participate in the decision making process. So remember, Kratos, what I did say in the beginning is that make sure that you apply elimination method if you want to score uh, full marks in section A. Remember, section A comprises of um, 30 marks. So now option A, we have ownership. And then if you still remember, um, before this act were introduced, um, black population uh, was somehow affected or were not given that much uh, privilege when it comes to ownership of land, ownership of property. So now um, we have a B, which uh, addresses the issue of enterprise and supply development. So now also uh, before ANC came into power or came into um, leadership, black people were disadvantaged. They were not even uh, given that platform to supply other businesses. And also number C, we have uh, skills development. So now skill development, uh, this one or this pillar takes into account the enhancement of um, skills for those employees that are already employed. So it does only cater for people who are already at the workplace, people who are already working. So before ANC came into power, most people, in particular black people, they were not given that uh, particular platform uh, to exercise uh, the enhancement of their skills or the improve the level of skills that they were possessing. So now we have option D. Option D is management uh, control. So black people also, uh, before ANC came into power during that um, apartheid era, they were not allowed to occupy any managerial positions. They were always uh, down there where they report to any management, either be uh, first line management, second line management, and uh, top line management. But now broad-based black economic empowerment, it does uh, take into account these four pillars where they do believe that black people also should be given that chance to perform those um aspects that uh, were expected for them to perform. So now, um, if we check uh, the question, it says, Raforo Limited used to dash as a broad-based black economic empowerment pillar when they requested their black employees to participate in a decision making. So this decision making normally takes place uh, under management control, meaning our our what our best option here is number D, which is management control. So now moving on to the next question, we have 1.13. Uh, Dyna Automotors operate in the dash sector as they manufacture luxury cars. So now options that we have, A, we have economic. Uh, B, we have secondary, C, we have primary, and D, we have uh, tertiary. So now, under business studies and economics, uh, the moment uh, we speak or mention a word economy, it means that price has to be paid. And then we have B, B, we have secondary. Secondary is a sector where processing of goods and services normally take place. And then number C, we have primary. Primary here we refer to, to nature. So we take into account uh, those uh, goods and services that are taking nature form. And then we have uh, tertiary. Uh, tertiary, we normally refer to what? We normally refer to services and services like communication, um, uh, healthcare facilities, schooling, and the likes. So now, if you compare uh, the given options, uh, the appropriate answer here will be B, because B takes into account um, 
the manufacturing of uh, luxury cars, meaning here we process luxury cars. I know one can actually uh, ask, what is this sector? Sector we refer to a portion of um, uh, the, the, the economy or the portion of economic uh, activity. So now it means that in economy, we have a different set of uh, the portions that address different set of goods as well as services. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be B. So now moving on to the next question, we have 1.1.4. So 1.1.4 reads as follow. The process of matching an employee's skills and abilities with the requirements of a job. So now the options that are given, we have A, recruitment, B, we have selection, C, we have placement, and D, we have induction. So now um, when we talk of the recruitment, recruitment is when the company is actually looking for a new candidate to fill the gap. So now when looking for a new candidate to fill the gap, there are different set of platforms where a company can advertise such uh, opportunity to be given to a proper or excellent candidate, if any. So now we have different set of this uh, recruitment. A company can advertise the post uh, internally or it can advertise it uh, externally. When it does advertise internally, uh, it means that um, it can uh, put uh, on the notice board, the advert or the notice board. Also the advert can be sent to different uh, personal emails because the company possesses the information of uh, its workers. So now we also have um, selection. So now selection also is actually being done after the submission of the, of the CVs to check uh, who qualifies best or who is the best candidate for that uh, particular position. So now we have placement. Placement uh, normally is, it, it takes place after, after the interviews and after the induction. Now is when a person or the candidate starts um, his duties. So induction is, is, is actually orientating a, a new candidate to know all the corners of the company. Uh, also, it introduces uh, the, this new candidate to already existing uh, members of that particular company. So now, um, the matching of employee skills and ability with the requirements of the job normally it can be addressed under um, the placement because as as much as i explained uh, what recruitment entails selection entails and induction the appropriate answer can be can be c thank you so now let's move on to the next question next question we have uh, 1.1.5 a dash function is responsible for keeping documents orderly in a safe place. So the first one or the first option, which is A, we have administration. And normally administration deals with uh, paperwork uh, as well as filing such uh, data work as well as the, the information uh, pertaining to an improvement that can take a company to the next level. So now we also have a purchasing function. So this one of purchasing function, normally it focuses on buying the vectors of production or the inputs that a company is going to, to engage in whenever they process or produce or manufacture their goods and services. So now we have the general management General management, uh, here we, we, we refer to um, uh, the process of planning, organizing, uh, leading and controlling organizational resources so as to achieve the planned goal of the, of the business. So now we also have D, 
which is uh, public relations. So this one of public relations is the department in a company that uh, makes sure that they release uh, presses to the public. They make sure that they improve the relationship between the company as well as the, the, the society where the company is operating in or from. So now in this regard, the appropriate answer for 1.1.5 is going to be uh, A, which is um, administration. Okay, right. So now in this regard, um, after you have actually completed all uh, your, your multiple choice questions, go back again to recheck if whatsoever options uh, you did choose are the appropriate ones. Remember the major motive or the major aim of um, writing this uh, question paper is to maximize marks as much as we can. If, if possible, we should always aim at getting 100%, uh, because getting 100% under business studies, it is very, very easy, just like stealing a candy from a child. So now um, we are done with our 1.1. So now let's move on to 1.2. Remember, guys, uh, under 1.1, each, each uh, question carries two marks, meaning you have already now scored what? You've already scored 10 marks out of uh, 30. So now let's jump on to 1.2. Remember, yes, you should always time yourself whenever you're writing business studies paper. And you shouldn't panic at all because the moment you panic, you are going to, to, to miss it or lose it because most of the answers here are pretty close, similar to one another. So now 1.2 uh, reads as follows. Complete the following statements by using the words provided in the list below. Write only the word or words next to the question numbers. And you are given an example there is 1.2.1 to 1.2. 0.5 in the uh, booklet answer book provided. So remember, before you can even jump on to reading the questions given, make sure that you understand the concepts given in a in in this um, box. We have fair and honest dealings. So this fair and honest dealings, you know, this is one of the one of the one of the rights of. Um, uh, buyers or one of the rights of uh, consumers. So we also have description and description, remember, uh, this is part of uh, what this, this take part of under, under recruitment. Because when we talk of description here, it is in relation with what, in relation with the duties that uh, an employee should perform at the workplace. So now also here we have performance and this performance that we are referring to we check um, how each and every department do perform their duties, their mandate. If it's the Department of Administration, they should make sure that they deal with uh, documents in a proper manner and they do the proper filing. And also, if it is a Department of Purchasing, they should make sure that they buy um, the factors of production or the inputs that are appropriate or the inputs that are uh, uh, of a good quality to produce goods and services of a higher quality. So we also have salt. So now here under salt, uh, normally it is an analysis. So now this analysis, uh, it gives a business strength to make more profit if the business uh, does understand what they, they're supposed to to do. For a typical example, um, we have S. S stands for the strengths of the business. The business should know where they possess more power. So they should always take advantage of the power that they possess so as to improve the level of profits that uh, they, they have actually anticipated or the level of profits that um, they want to attain or they want to, to achieve. So now we also have the witnesses. So the business also should be in the position to spot out 
the weaknesses that they have. The moment they're able to spot out the weaknesses that they have, they can actually uh, apply more of the strengths that they possess to beat or outweigh uh, the weaknesses or the failure that uh, they do have. So now also uh, the business should always navigate or should always sense out the opportunities that they can have. So now it means that they must always make sure that they apply the strength to do what? To, 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 to make sure that uh, they do what? Pursue or they do follow those opportunities that uh, they do have. Now we are afraid. So now this one addresses the issue of competition. Many in the business should be in the position to know their competitors because competitors are very powerful. Some of the competitors, they use non-pricing method to improve their level of, of production. So now if, if the business is aware of the move of the competitors, in that regard, they'll make sure that as well they improve on their level of uh, profit uh, collection. Um, uh, in most cases, as a business, we shouldn't um, aim for sharing the market. The business should always aim at having the larger market share because the moment a business possesses larger market share, that is the indication that it will make reasonable profits. And it is not easy for any business to possess a larger market share uh, when they didn't uh, take uh, or when they didn't do the assignment. How can they do the assignment? They can do the assignment and, uh, I mean, uh, uh, over doing what? Over doing the research or over undertaking the research. They must know the type of the product the competitor is selling. They must know the suppliers of the competitor. They must even know the behavior of the customers of the competitor so that when they draft their move, they already know that the competitor normally takes this move. So now they can develop a move that is much stronger than the move of a competitor. That's how powerful sort analysis is. Okay, right. So now I was just making an example on how best... Um, you should understand this concept before you can jump on to these um, questions. So now let's move on to 1.2.1. 1.2.1, and N exercised her right to dash as stipulated in the Consumer Protection Act. So 2008, uh, age 68 of 2008. When she requested a written quotation from uh, detail trading. So in this regard, if you compare the options given here, Anna exercised her right to choose. So meaning the appropriate answer here is what is right to choose. So here we have what we have choose. Okay, right. So now let's move on to what? Let's move on to um, the next question, which is 1.2.2. 1.2.2 reads as follow. Double Z butchery bought Mike Kettle, bought Mike Kettle Farm to have greater control over the supply of meat products. So this one, before you can even finish it, it calls for backward, backward strategy. So now let's proceed. This is known as the, now we check if ever uh, we have backward uh, strategy given. So now, okay, it's there. We have backward vertical strategy. Meaning here, the appropriate answer for 1.1.2 is going to be what? It's going to be backward. Backward. Vertical. Backward vertical strategy. So now let's move on to 1.2.3. Uh, Value trading compiled a dash analysis to identify good practices and challenges within the business. This one 
as I, I, I was actually explaining, it does call for a, what you call sword. So here, our appropriate answer here is going to be sword. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question reads as follow. The job dash outlines the minimum acceptable qualifications, minimum acceptable qualifications and skills needed for the job. So great jobs, remember we have two types of our job analysis. The first type that we have is the, a job description and job description normally addresses the issue of uh, performance as well as uh, the issue of um, duties, the duties uh, for, for, for the candidate. And when we talk of um, job specification, it does specify what is needed for that job, the skills as well as the qualifications needed. So in this regard, our answer is going to be uh, specification. So meaning here, uh, we have specification as our um, appropriate answer. We have specification. We have, sorry, we have sp specification as our um, appropriate answer. Okay, right. Uh, hopefully, great talks at this uh, juncture. Now you have um, acquired a lot. Remember, I told you, as much as we'll be fighting uh, over time, as much as we'll be fighting to write or to complete each and every question within the stipulated time, also make sure that whatsoever you write is something that is understandable. So now the last one, we have 1.2.5. It does read like this. Quality dash can be obtained if all departments work together for the same quality standard. So remember, I, I did explain this performance. I said that each and every department should be in the position to know their mandate. They should be in the position to know what they are supposed um, to be doing. So now here, the appropriate answer that we have under this regard, we have, um, we have uh, what? We have um, performance. Okay, right. So now, great talks. Uh, we are done with our 1.1, 1.2. So it means that you have already collected um, 20 marks. You have already collected 20 marks, and you are now left with 10 marks before you get to uh, 30 marks for section A. And remember, the expectation for section A is to get everything correct not to even leave one so now let's let's actually uh, move on, move on to the next word next question which is 1.3 so in this 1.3 choose a description from column b that matches a term in column a write only the letter a to to j next to the question number 1.3.1 .1 to 1.3.5 in the answer book so an example is given there as 1.3.6k. So now, uh, this question or this type of question, if you are not uh, careful, it can somehow be very tricky. So now, we shouldn't be actually excited when it comes to the selection. Say, ah, already I know this concept in column A, it does match with um, this description in column B. No, make sure that you go through whatsoever description given, and also go through uh, the, the, the concept given. For deeper example, if we check 1.3.1, um, we have what? We have Black Economic uh, Empowerment. And Black Economic Empowerment, as I said it in a previous question, I said that it, it, it was somehow a, a, a benefiting only some few people who were what? Who were are somehow disadvantaged. That is why I told you that uh, broad based black economic empowerment uh, came, into, came into existence so as to fill up whatsoever the gap that was left by black economic um, empowerment. So now, 
if you go through the options given, uh, the appropriate option for our 1.3.1 um, is, is, is D. So our appropriate answer here is D. So now moving on to the uh, next question, we have 1.3.2. So 1.3.2, uh, it addresses uh, the issue of uh, strategic management process. So now uh, to, to, to be strategic in a, in a business, it means uh, the business should always take into account the action plan. They should have the plan. Where are they going to start? And also, how are they going to implement the plan that they already have? So now, if we check the options given, the appropriate answer uh, for this question is, um, is uh, E. So meaning E is what developing an action plan that includes tasks to be done. So we have E as our appropriate answer. Okay, right, great tools. So now moving on, to the next question, we have 1.3.3. 1.3.3, 3, we have time related. And time related uh, is, 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 is what is an example of uh, type of the uh, remuneration or the reward that uh, are given to, to employees after they performed their duties or after they have rendered the service. So now in this time related, we have two types of, 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 of uh, rewarding employees. The first one we have time related and uh, the second one we have piecemeal. So time related, an employee is actually being compensated. After doing the work, the employee is compensated according to the number of hours they spend at the workplace. But now when it comes to um, piecemeal uh, salary, uh, that one, employees are normally compensated um, based on the number of units they produced. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be A. Employees are paid for the number of hours that is spent at the workplace. So now um, we have our 1.3.3. 1. 1. The answer that we have is f so now a uh, moving on to the next question next question we have what do we call screening and normally screening uh, it is done uh, after the submission of the cvs after the submission of the cvs that's when screening is actually taking place so now the the, the screening does help to uh, to separate uh, the candidates who, who, who doesn't uh, meet the requirements uh, to those or with those who does meet um, the requirements. So now if we check the options given, we have um, G, candidates who meet the minimum requirements are separated from others. So meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be, is going to be what? Is going to be G. Okay, right. So now moving on great talks to the next question. We have 1.3.5. 1.3.5 addresses the issue of our public relations department. When we talk of the function under business studies, normally we refer to we refer to the department. So now remember I told you that this is the department that prom promotes healthier or harmonious relationship between the business as well as the community where that business uh, does operate from. So now if we check the options given, uh, the appropriate answer here is B, where uh, it provides regular and positive press uh, releases to the, what, to the public. So meaning here, our appropriate answer it is actually um, B. So now we are done with our, um, our section A. And remember, I, I said the major aim of this section A is to collect each and every mark that you come across, meaning we are not expecting you guys to, 
to score less than 30 because the total marks that are allocated for the whole section is 30 marks. And you have seen, if you have been following that, to attain such marks, it is very, very easy as well as simple. So what you must do is to make sure that you manage your time as well as understanding as well the questions that you are dealing with. And before you can move on to the next question, you should always make sure that you do what you, you, you proof check what you wrote. Don't just move on to the next question without proof checking what you wrote. Because sometimes uh, you may think that uh, you answered the question in the, in the appropriate manner, while in actual fact you did uh, the opposite. <laughs> okay, so now we are now in, in, in section B. Remember, I did uh, some scrutiny on section B, and I said that section B, in most cases, you are given three questions, and the expectation here is to select only two questions. And when you select those two questions, select the questions that you, you think you, you have studied them properly, or the questions that you know very well that you understand them very, very well. And if you can actually check or still remember, uh, in most cases under question two, we can have uh, quality performance, and also we can have uh, HR, and also we can have uh, business uh, strategies. Um, okay, so now let's uh, check um, uh, 2.1. 2 Name any two types of defensive strategy. So before you can actually come up with a type of defensive strategy, you must know the meaning of defensive. Under which circumstance should the business defense itself? It means the business can defense itself when it, it is going down. And how can we say the business is going down when the business is not generating enough profit? And remember, when you talk of the success of the business, in most cases, we pay attention towards, um, towards the generation of the, of the profit. So in this regard, if we have two types of defensive strategy, if the business is going down, they have different set of options. Option number one, they can what? They can retrench. Retrenchment. It means here, yeah, if the business was having a lot of staff, they must cut their staff, staff members. And the moment they cut their staff members, it means now, they are also going to they are also going to limit the level of uh, spending. So now another strategy that the business can engage in is what we call liquidation. Liquidation is when a business with liquidation we check how fast uh, assets can be turned into into money. So now it means that in this regard, the the business has to do what the business has to sell some of its assets so as to give money okay so now we are done with what we are done with um 2.2.1 so now we can actually move on to um 2.2.2 so now 2.2 um we have um what do we call the diversification strategy so also, grade 12, you should be in the position to know under which circumstance a business should employ or should practice this uh, style. A business can practice diversification style or diversification strategy when it does want to uh, increase the margin of the profits collection. So it means if they want to improve the margin of profit collection, they should engage either in new products either in exist, they, modif they modify the existing product so that they, it can be of a higher quality and be app appealing to the customers. So now diversification, in, 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 in short, it means that um, you shouldn't put your eggs in one basket. Make sure that you concentrate on different aspects. So in this regard, a business should concentrate on different products whether they introduce a new product or they modify or they improve the quality of the product that they are already already um, having so now here we can we can have what 
you can me go to the blank page. So we have two points. We have two, we have two point two. So two point two, they must they can increase. They can increase. They can increase sales. and business growth how can they increase sales and business growth they can increase sales uh, by introducing new products or by modifying um, the products that they are already already having so now if you check your marks we have six marks also, the business should improve uh, its brand as well as image. Improvement of the business brand. Improvement of the business brand. And image. Okay, so also uh, moving on to the third point, because if you check the allocation of marks there, we have six marks. Uh, the business also should reduce the risk of relying only on one product. They should reuse the risk of relying only on one product so i think i i did explain this one so let's let's move on to to the second question i mean the next question sorry so now we have 2.3 identify identify uh, the pastel elements that uh, pose a challenge to semi traders in each statement below guys if you still remember this pestle is one of the analyses that a business should take into account or pay attention to the moment they want um, to improve the level of profits that they normally collect on daily basis weekly basis uh, fortnightly monthly basis and even yearly so now here we have uh, P. P stands for political. It means that um, businesses uh, should always pay attention to the level of politics. Are there any political unrest or political rest today? Because the moment there are political unrest, chances are very, very high that businesses won't collect or attain the profits that they have actually anticipated. But now, if there is a political rise, it means that in that regard, businesses can perform towards their full capabilities or towards their full uh, potential. Because now the politics or the level of politics um, do allow them uh, to perform such. So now also we have uh, economic, also we have economic, also, the business should always pay attention to uh, the economic activities that are taking place in that particular country or in that particular location. Because the moment uh, the economic activities are not well, people are not working there, 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 are, there are high levels of crime and the likes, that one on its own also is going to affect the way the business operates in that manner so now also we have a uh, social so this social uh, it stands uh, this s stands for social it means that uh, businesses wherever they do operate from they should pay attention to the society that is located there and if you still remember any previous uh questions uh, we did um we did uh, indicate that uh this uh social Normally, it is addressed by uh, public relations function or public relations uh, department. And also, we have what? 
uh, we have um, technology. It means that uh, businesses should uh, well, should keep up with uh, current technology because the moment they don't keep up with current technology, uh, they'll be beaten by rivals. They'll be beaten by competitors uh, because uh, most of the businesses they have engaged their uh, activities or they've channeled their activities towards um, technology. Uh, if you check even how they advertise their product, some of uh, or most of the businesses they normally go for they normally go for 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 internet uh, to advertise the product, or they normally go for um, social media to advertise uh, their product. So now. A uh, massive uh, marketing in most cases, uh, lately or recently, uh, it does um, take place uh, under technology. Also legal. L stands for legal. So it means that uh, businesses should be legit and they should always understand and they should always know the, the, the legal precautions or, 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 or what the rules and regulations that are taking place in that particular country or in that particular location where they operate from. So it means that the moment they are in the position to understand the rules and the regulations, for for example, if they know they should always pay tax and the type of tax that they know they pay, they pay is company tax and also the percentage that they pay, those are the aspects that businesses should always uh, pay attention to. Because the moment they fail to pay attention to that, some businesses end up being what being penalized because of not paying tax. That is why it is very, very important for most of businesses to take into account the legal what legal aspects uh, that should be followed um, in a particular what in a particular um, economy or in a particular country. So now the last one we have environment. Also, where the business operates in, it should make sure that it doesn't pollute the environment. They should try by all means to avoid uh, polluting the environment. Because the moment they pollute the environment, that on its own, it is going to affect the place where they, they, what they operate from. What I have actually seen, most of the businesses here in South Africa, what they do, uh, they engage into uh, projects where they help um, the community uh, to to what to transport their what their their products or their waste to the recycling uh, companies. And when if a business you do like that, you are going to have a lot of customers because uh, lately uh, most of the communities they have engaged into recycling businesses and they recycle for the survival of their families. So as a business, make sure that you always chip in there so as to help them to improve their standard of living or their well-being. Okay, right. So now having explained all of uh, the, 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 the aspects or the vectors that appear under pistol, now it is going to be very easy for us to engage into these questions that follow. 2.3.1 2.3.2, 2.3.3. Okay, the first one, we have um, many customers. Many customers uh, cannot afford their products due to low income levels resulting in a decline in, in sales. The moment it, it does addresses the issue of customers. This one calls for what? It calls for social. I explained it already. Thanks. So now, uh, moving on to the next um, aspect, we have 2.3.2. Uh, they do not have internet facilities to cater for customers who prefer to make online purchases. So this one, because of internet facilities, uh, we can say it calls for technology. Tech, no, technology. Okay, right. So now moving on to, to the next aspect, we have uh, 
3.3. Semi traders can no longer afford to deliver goods due to the increase in the fuel prices. So this one uh, calls for economical. Because remember I said, the moment you talk of economical, uh, it means that the price should be there. E -co no me come. Thank you very much, uh, Great Hoffs. So now let's move on to uh, 2.4. 2. So 2.4, uh, you are expected um, to explain the steps in strategy ev uh, evaluation. Uh, here, you must know, you must know uh, the meaning of evaluation and the meaning of uh, strategy. So this is our 2.4. And also should be in the position to check the allocation of marks because allocation of marks can work as a guide uh, for you to write what the question expects you uh, to actually write. So now uh, you have you should always examine the underlying basis of business strategy. Examine the underlying basis of uh, business strategy. Examine. underlying basis of business strategy of a business strategy you already what you already collected um two points so now the second one set specific dates for control and follow up set specific dates for control and up two marks again so now the last one the last one the business should always compare the expected performance with the actual performance the business should always compare the expect expected expected performance with the actual performance So now um, we are done with uh, what? We are done with 2.4. 2. Now we can move on to the next question. The next question, we have 2.2.5. 2. So 2.5, always make sure that uh, you read the scenario to understand. Don't just scrutinize the given scenario. Because what I have actually observed, the most of the great 12 learners, what they do, they scrutinize instead of reading to understand the concept of which in most cases they go wrong there. So now read the scenario below and answer the questions that follow. Excel Bank, which is EB. Excel Bank offers various um, products to prospective clients. So Excel Bank offers various financial products to prospective clients. So this one on its own, before you can even jump onto any question, you know uh, it does operate under uh, tertiary sector. Okay, right. So now the bank conducts an affordability assessment before uh, credit is granted, which is good. And uh, the bank ensures that 
their clients receive information in an understandable language, which is good. They also allow their clients to access and challenge the credit records. Wow, I love I love this uh, business. So now uh, the first question goes, which is uh, 2.5.1. It does go, quote, to consumer rights in terms of the National Credit Act. Um, 34 of uh, 2005 from the scenario above. So here I'm going to first uh, talk of uh, a word code. Then from there, I'll come to National Credit Act. So now a word code. If uh, the question requires you to code, the, the expectation is that you just go straight to the given scenario or go straight to the given information. Then you take... Um, those sentences exactly the way they appear. You don't adjust up, you don't adjust it down. So in that regard, you would have quoted according to the expectation of a question. So now moving on, uh, we have National Credit Act. National Credit Act is the act um, that protects uh, both the, the, the credit, credit offers business as well as the clients who are borrowing money. So now this act says that before any credit um, offering business issues out a credit to any client, they must first check the client credit worthiness. Does a client uh, qualify for such uh, credit to be granted to them? Because some of the businesses, they normally issue out uh, loans to even clients that are blacklisted. So now this act says that no, if a business and you are dealing with uh, uh, issuing or lending of money to clients, first make sure that if this appropriate candidate uh, to give out such monies. Why is that the case? Because if a, if, if a client is not a credit worthy person, the business will end up losing a lot of profits. In return, the business will end up being unsuccessful and then it will end up being insolvent or it will actually shut down. Okay, right. So now here, um, if we quote, we have a sentence. The business, I mean, the question says, quote, two consumer rights in terms of the National Credit Act. So when I give the answers, I'm going to give the answers based on sentences. This is the sentence number one. This is the sentence number two. This is the sentence number three. And this is the sentence number four. So it means in this regard, we are going to take sentence number three and sentence number four. Sentence number three and sentence number four are our appropriate answer. So we take sentence. Sentence three and four. So sentence three reads as follows. EB ensures that their clients receive information in an understandable language. Meaning if uh, they use English, they make sure that they, they communicate with the clients using English. If they use any vernacular language in the same manner, they make sure that they do communicate with such uh, clients using the language that is appropriate to them, either be Sutu, uh, Swana, Hosa, and the likes. So now, the last one, which is sentence number four, they also allow clients to access and challenge their credit records, which is also very understandable. So now, let's move on to... Uh, 2.5.2 discuss the impact of national credit act on businesses if the question says discuss the impact it means that you should uh, what you should consider both um positive and negative take into account both positive and negative and also if the question says discuss it means that you should go as deep as you can. Don't just point out some aspects. 
just go deep as much as you do can. So in this regard, the marks allocated for this question, we have how many marks? We have six marks. So remember one point normally carries uh, two marks. So in this regard, we are going to uh, take two uh, positive as well as one negative. So now uh, we have two point, two point, two point six, two point six. We have two point six. So two point six, you expected to have three points because of um, six marks. So now the positive one, let me start with positive. We have positive impact. The positive impact, uh, businesses should always lower bad debts resulting into better cash flow. How can, how can we name our customers uh, bad debt? You, you, you can be called bad debt if as a customer, you have been given a grace period to settle the, 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 the debt that you have in a business, but now you fail to comply or you fail to pay whatsoever that you're supposed to pay. So uh, the business end up saying that, hey, so now since you promised to pay your debt within this time period and you failed to pay that debt, now we call you a bad debt. So now here we are saying that um, lower, lower bad debts, resulting resulting in better cash flow remember when 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 we are saying that a business should always lower bad debts uh, we mean that they shouldn't uh, just give up on, on someone uh, who is owing their business. They should make sure that they make proper follow-ups up until the person is able to settle whatsoever they owe the business. Also, the business should make sure that they minimize issuing out their, 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 their stock to customers without paying for them. So now, in that regard, it means that Whatsoever cash that they will be receiving, either it can be uh, inflow because of whatsoever they will be receiving is cash inflow. So in that regard, it is going to increase. And the moment the cash inflow is high, then um, they are what they are going to have uh, enough or reasonable profits. And also, they should minimize the cash that uh, goes out of the business, meaning there sh should be a minimal cash outflow. So now, uh, moving on, guys, uh, we also have what uh, the business should always protect, um, uh, again, be protected against non-paying customers. So now here, protect businesses, against non-paying customers or consumers. So now let's move on to negative. Negative impact. How is this going to affect the business? in a negative way. So now, um, business can no longer carry out credit uh, marketing. Businesses can no longer carry out 
Reddit marketing. Okay, right. So thank you very much, uh, Great Twelves. Now we can move on to the next question. The next question we have landed on question uh, question seven two point seven, and question two point seven uh, addresses um, the issue of what the issue of uh, Paras five uh, forces model. So also this is the the model or the theory that uh, businesses normally uh, engage in so as to collect as much profits as they can. And the, the, the person behind this theory is Mr. Mr. Potter. Okay, um, right. So now um, we have, we have um, the question that reads as follows. Advise businesses on how they could apply the flowing forces of the Potter's Five uh, Force Model to analyze um their position in the market environment okay so now we should also take into account the meaning of a weight market when we talk of a weight market we refer to what or what a market environment